The Youngstown State University Honors College is pleased to present Storytime from Folk Hall, the home of the Honors College, and from the homes of our alumni near and far. We hope the sharing of stories from members of the Honors community brightens your day. So my name is Sharia Peaks and I am a first year student and I'm majoring in biology. And the first book I'll be reading today is The Minor Sword. I chose this book because my nephew is very, um, he really loves dinosaurs. So, one morning before Mrs. Raptor rang the bell, the dinosaurs were playing in the schoolyard. All of a sudden, they heard a roar. Mine, mine, mine. Oh no, muttered Stegosaurus. Here comes the Minosaur. He snatched the jump rope and the ball. He threw the cars against the wall, and then he roared to one and all, mine, mine, mine. Iguodon said, that's not fair. Tri Triceratops said, you should share. But the Minosaur yelled, I don't care. They're mine, mine, mine. Right then, the bell rang. The Minosaur hugged the toys inside all mine. You're late, Mrs. Raptor said when the Minosaur finally came to class. Now you'll have to paint your project during snack time. By the time the Minosaur finished, snack time was in full swing. The Minosaur rushed on ahead. He snatched the scones and strudel bread. He bit the butter tarts and said, they're mine, mine, mine. That's our food yelled Ap Aptosaur. No, it's not, cried Minosaur. And soon there was a tug of war as he wait, as he willed, mine. The rest of the class can go out for recess, said Miss Raptor said. You will stay here until you clean up this mess. The Minosaur scowled and bit into a scone. At least the food's all mine, he grumbled. But the feast wasn't as much fun when it was made for one. At recess, the Minosaur saw the other dinos having fun building a tower. His arms were flailing all around. The tower tumbled to the ground. He grabbed a bunch of blocks and frowned. They're mine, mine, mine. How could you, yelled Iguodon. It's wrecked now, said Pterodon. The Minosaur said, oh, come on, these blocks are mine. The dinos rolled their eyes. Finally, Triceratops said, let's go, guys. I don't need them anyway, said the Minosaur. I'll build a better tower by myself. Look at this, he shouted, the biggest tower ever, but there was no dino around to hear it. At the other end of the yard, the rest of the dinos were laughing and playing. They didn't seem to miss the Minosaur at all. The Minosaur began to shake. There's nothing left for me to take. No toys, at, no toys at all, for goodness sake. They don't care. The Minosaur wanted to laugh and play too. So he gathered up all the stuff that was his and headed toward the dinos. The Minosaur asked, want some snacks? The other dinos turned their backs. I brought the blocks for us to stack. Come on, let's share. The Minosaur tried saying, please, I brought some toys, I'll give you these. The dinos stared down at their knees. They just didn't care. Okay then, the, dinos, the Minosaur said. He put all the stuff down, you guys should play. The dinos looked at each other. Isn't this your stuff, said Stegosaurus. The Minosaur shook his head. I shouldn't have taken it. The Minosaur was still walking when he heard the dino shout, wait. They said, we want to play with you, said Minosaur. You really do? The dinos nodded. 
Yes, it's true. If you'll share, it's fine. The Minosaur yelled, it's a deal. I have the thing I want, he squealed. You don't know how to make, you don't know how this makes me feel. My friends, you're mine. Mine, mine, mine. The end. So the next book I'm going to read is 10 Thank You Letters. It starts off, ring, ring. Hello, rabbit. Hello, pig. Want to play? Sure, but first I'm writing a thank you letter to my grandma. She got me this sweater for my birthday. Nice. Hey, I want to thank my grandma too. Can I borrow a piece of paper, pig, and a pencil? Sure, rabbit. Dear Grandma, thank you for the marshmallow cake you always bake for my birthday. Love, Rabbit. Okay, big. Okay, pig. I am done with my letter. How about you? Not yet, Rabbit. I am telling my grandma about the weather. But it's a thank you letter. Why tell her about the weather? I don't know, Rabbit. It's just the way I do it. Whoa. I just thought of someone who deserves a big thank you. Can I borrow another piece of paper, pig? And an envelope and a stamp too? Dear Madam President, thank you for doing a ducky job. Let me know if you need some help. Love, Rabbit. Done. Are you finished with your letter, pig? Let letter yet, pig? Well, no. I thought I'd tell my grandma about how I'm helping my mom with chores. Chores? Why are you telling her that? It's a thank you letter. Because grandma likes it when I help my mom and she might want to know how things are going around here. Hey, I just thought of another great person to thank. Can I borrow more paper? Dear Mr. Lappin, in case you were wondering how things are going around here, they are great. Your funny books make my whole class laugh. Love, Rabbit. Are you done with your letter yet, Pig? No, Rabbit. I just want to tell my grandma that I laughed so much yesterday, my loose tooth came out. Can I have another sheet of paper, Pig? Let me guess. You thought of someone else to thank. I sure did. Dear Mrs. Pachyderm, thanks for teaching us about brushing our teeth. Now I have clean teeth and a fresh breath. Love, Rabbit. This one's done too. How is your letter going, Pig? Well, I haven't seen my grandma in a while, so there's a lot to tell her. But you keep interrupting. Sorry, Pig. Maybe if you just give me a stack of papers, and envelopes and more stamps, I won't have to bother you. Dear Mr. Moose, you are the best librarian. Thanks for finding me so many sports books. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mrs. Otter, thanks for being a great bus driver and never getting lost on the way to school. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mrs. Chicken, thanks for being a great crossing guard and making sure everyone gets to the other side. <laughs> Love, Rabbit. Dear Mr. Hawk, thanks for always giving me a carrot pop at your market. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mr. Kid, thanks for delivering all our mail. It's a lot to carry, isn't it? Love, Rabbit. There, I am finished. See you later, Pig. I am off to the mailbox to send my letters. Finally, I can finish my letter. Yay, done. But Rabbit used all my envelopes and all of my stamps. Oh no, how will I mail my letter to my grandma now? Ring, ring. Hello, pig. Guess what? I got more envelopes and stamps for you. And I wrote one more thank you letter. I thought I'd deliver it myself. Here. 
Thanks, Rabbit. No one ever wrote me a thank you letter before. Dear Pig, thank you for inspiring me and for being generous and for being my friend. Love, Rabbit. P.S. Now are you ready to play catch? Yay, game time. Yes, after a quick stop at the mailbox. Dear Grandma, thanks for sending the great birthday sweater. Did you know my favorite color is purple? The weather has been so cool, so I can wear the sweater every day, even when I am helping mom wash dishes or sweep the floor. Yesterday, my best friend Rabbit and I were laughing at a funny book, and my loose tooth fell out. Oh well, I will grow another one. Anyway, thanks again for the sweater, and I hope you are well. Love, Pig. The end. The next book I am going to read is called Carl and the Meaning of Life. Carl was not a bird. Carl was not a bear or a beaver. Carl was an earthworm. He lived underground, moving, always moving, burrowing, tunneling, digesting dead leaves, feasting and casting, turning hand turning hard dirt into fluffy soil day after day. Why, asked a field mouse, are you gathering seeds? Why do you do that? Why? Carl did not know why, but now he needed to find out. So Carl stopped making fluffy soil. I'll be right back, he told the field mouse. He spotted a rabbit. Maybe she knew. Why do I do what I do? He asked her. Oh, goodness, dear, she said. I do not know. I do what I do for my babies. But Carl did not have babies. A fox appeared. Carl turned to the fox. Why do I do what I do? Asked Carl. Who do I do it for? For whom, replied the fox. Alas, my meal awaits. I am here for the hunt. But Carl did not want to hunt. Why are you talking to a fox, cried a squirrel. Carl was startled because the field mouse is waiting and wants to know what I'm here for. The squirrel declared, I'm here to plant trees. Trees are where I sleep. But Carl, but Carl could not sleep not high in a tree, and not without an answer for the, for, for the mouse. He pushed on. But the birds had flown off to find grasses and fluff. The bear turned away to look for berries. Soon there was nobody left to talk to. What about me? Carl cried. The clouds were silent. So was the air. I will never find out, he sniffled. Then Carl heard his sniffle echo, followed by a squeak. I can't find any grubs, a voice cried. It was the saddest ground beetle he ever seen. Carl peeked under a stone, no grubs. Then he poked at the dirt. It was hard like rock. Where was his fluffy soil? Suddenly, Carl knew what he needed to do. I'll be back, he promised. For hours into days, weeks into months, Carl munched, digested, left castings, and tunnel. He turned that hard dirt back into rich soil. You made my seeds grow, said the mouse. Clover blossomed once again. The rabbit came back with her kids. The squirrel returned to plant new trees, and the fox was lured by the hunt, all of them able to do what they do. 
How? Well, why not ask Carl? The end. So I'm going to read one more book. It's called Snowman All Year. I love to build a snowman on freezing winter days, but when the sun is bright and warm, my snowman melts away. There's nothing but a puddle when my snowman disappears. If only he were magic, he could stay with me all year. I teach him how to fly a kite high above the trees. Then we would dig for pirate gold or sell this eat seven seas. I know that you will love to see the tigers at the zoo. At, and at my birthday party, we would celebrate his too. We'd go on all the wildest rides at the amusement park. But best of all, would be the fireworks lighting up the dark. On stormy evenings, I would play my favorite games with him. On sunny days, I teach him how to dive and how to swim. <laughs> On summer evenings in the dark, we chase some fireflies or sleep out in the quiet woods beneath the starry skies. At the beach, we'd play all day. He would get very sandy. We'd trick or treat on Halloween and bring home lots of candy. Maybe this is magic snow that will not disappear. And this snowman will be the one to stay with me all year. The end. Hi, my name is Katie Demetrius. I'm a freshman um, at YSU Honors College. Today I'll be reading you a couple of stories. The first being, Are You My Mother? Thank you for watching Storytime, a new program designed to help with literacy and learning. Brought to you by the Honors College at the Youngstown State University. The YSU Honors College provides highly motivated students with opportunities to deepen their learning and develop to their full intellectual and cultural potential. Students also contribute to the community by service projects such as Storytime. The college is committed to creating an environment welcoming to and supportive of students from diverse backgrounds. Storytime airs Mondays at 6 p.m. See you next time.